بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Hello uh, Today we will learn about humanistic perspective. Uh, this is the fourth uh, perspectives um, that we are studying in our course. Even in fact, it is the fifth perspective because we have studied about biological perspective, then we studied behavioristic perspective, then uh, cognitivist perspective, and then the psychodynamic perspective. And now we are in humanistic perspective. Humanistic perspective focus on positive human qualities. It talks about self-awareness, freedom of choice, and also the human capacity uh, for positive growth. Well, you can understand uh, from this positive emphasis that the humanistic approach considers that uh, in humanistic approach, human are perceived as innately good. When human violate or deviate from their innate good, then they experience mental or social problems. There are two main theorists in this school, uh, Carl Rogers and Abraham Maslow. So let's uh, talk about Abraham Maslow first. Abraham Maslow proposed the hierarchy of human needs, starting from lowest level, that is physiological needs, to the highest level that is self-actualization. First level of needs are basic needs, you can say survival needs, food, uh, water, breathing, sleep, shelter, etc. And then we have a second level of needs that is related to security and it includes physical security, financial security, health security, protection, freedom from fear, and other material securities. In the third level of needs, we have our belongingness needs or our lo love needs. Once we are physiologically satisfied and we are physically secured, we look forward for friendship, for, for making families, uh, love and relationships. You can say this level satisfy our psychosocial needs. Afterwards, we enter in the fourth level that is called self-esteem. Once uh, we meet the three levels, we look forward to get a sense of achievement, a sense of success, a sort of self-confidence. And we look for reciprocity in respect kind of gave respect and receive respect. These satisfactions develop our self-esteem and our self-confidence. A person who has a high self-esteem will move to the next and uh, the last level that is called self-actualization. This is the level where we experience realization of our potential. We are no more prejudiced uh, and uh, we are no more self-centered. We accept people and we follow the high moral values and we are creative with a purposeful life. Even though Maslow believed that every person has potential to reach self-actualization, uh, he also knew that not all people can reach this level. Well, uh, let's talk a little bit more about self-esteem and self-actualization. Well, uh, self-worth or self-esteem and self-esteem. Self-esteem relates to the way we feel about ourselves externally. For example, how we look ourselves, how we feel ourselves, how we act and how we, we perceive ourselves in our external world. Whereas self-worth is more internal. It's about your sense of self. It refers to the feelings 
of how important you feel yourself inside. It is about your belongingness, your identity, and it also involves finding meanings of your life and a sense of ownership or a purpose. So usually, first uh, we get self-worth and then we move towards self-esteem. You can see a picture and uh, well, uh, I should not uh, talk too much about this picture because a picture is worth a thousand words. So I hope you can see in this picture and this picture is giving meaning to the concept of self-esteem and self-worth. Okay, uh, now about self-actualization. According to Maslow, it is the highest level need and he states this needs add, uh, as uh, what a man can be, he must be. There are several other definitions of self-actualization. One of the definitions that fits here in line with Maslow is the psychological process aimed at maximizing the use of a person's, person's abilities and resources. This process may vary from one person, person to another person. Okay, hence self-actualization is the realization of our creative self, our full potential and our intellectual abilities. It is a recognition of our innate good and this is a self-fulfillment need. For example, a musician using his full potential to compose a melody. A writer is going to write a novel. A poet who writes a masterpiece of the poetry. And a painter who is painting a great art. All of them are doing something that they think they must do and they are doing it. All these are examples of self-actualization. Uh, hence, you can say Ilam Iqbal was a self-actualized person. Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan was a self-actualized person. Uh, Maslow, uh, according to the uh, Maslow's theory, uh, we also uh, get some characteristics of self-actualized per uh, persons. For example, the self-actualized persons are those who are efficient in the perception of reality, they are comfortable in accepting others and uh, they are autonomous, they, they, they make their own decisions, uh, they are not confused about it and they are, they are creative. They have clarity of their decisions, yes, and they are also creative about it. And they know about imperfections and weakness of themselves. So, so they are, uh, I mean, they know their strength and weakness both. And they love humanity, uh, regardless of any biases. They have a strong focus on problems outside of themselves. So they are not always struggling within themselves. They are also non-hostile uh, towards, uh, non-hostile and they also have a sense of humor uh, that is not hostile humor. They accept themselves as whatever they are. Uh, they are happy with themselves. There is no sense of guilt. There is no shame, whatever they are not. And they are able to accept others in the same way. So they don't find faults with other people as well. Uh, in their feeling, they find themselves as natural, so they are not artificial. Okay, uh, in this slide, you can see how we can divide different level of needs in three major categories. First two level of needs are our basic needs, so you can say these are our uh, survival needs. We cannot survive without meeting these two uh, levels. And then next two levels are important for our psycho social well-being because uh, they are about our uh, psychological well-being and our social well-being. And then the, the last part uh, is the self-actualization that is our self-fulfillment need. Uh, well, there is always a criticism, you know, and uh, criticism a scholarly criticism always creates knowledge. So there was a criticism on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Uh, so I am pointing out here the four major criticisms. First, the psychologist could not find sufficient evidence uh, to believe that one level of needs is fulfilled at one time. 
so there may be different level of needs simultaneously fulfilled yes maybe in other words it is not a stage like progression then the second criticism is again about the step by step fulfillment of needs and uh, for example uh, the psychologist says that it does not seem like a hierarchy of needs uh, what about an artist who is starving but he is painting masterpieces i just uh, remember uh, the famous poet sagar siddiqui who who was actually poor and who was uh, suffering from cancer and uh, he used to sell his poetry in in, in some uh, with uh, asking for little amount of money and he died at the footpath 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 i think but you see that his poetry uh, is he's he's famous for his poetry so that is an example that we we can see a reverse hierarchy um, so it does not work that way that the mass people perceives uh, then you will you will also consider that uh, the the profits or all the profits are self actualized uh, but majority of the profits were poor and they have hardships in their life and their basic needs were even compromised but they were self actualized so you see this was a big challenge uh, and it was a major criticism on his hierarchy of needs uh, not all self actualized creative persons follow this hierarchy of need to reach self actualization and next criticism is the role of the culture that can change uh, the order of hierarchy of needs uh, we are also unable to measure the level of satisfaction to know if one level has been completed or not so these were few criticism and uh, uh, quite valid criticism on his hierarchy of needs now uh, we will talk about carl roger carl roger is seen as the founder of clients client centered or person centered uh, therapy and this was uh, his plus point i mean he's famous for this he believed that human are innately good and he actually firmly rejected psycho uh, analytical perspective on human personality he emphasized on human growth and and the capacity to choose for himself he believed the subjectivity of human experience and the individual perceptions about the world he gave the concept of unconditional positive regard that is about unconditional acceptance of people's subjective experience and uh, some of the characteristics that roger gave us about the fully functional person uh, they are uh, that the fully functional person are not defensive so they have a very realistic perception about their experience they have openness to experience they they live in, in present and do not stray in past or future they trust themselves and they can feel what is right and what is wrong uh, and they acknowledge their freedom of choice but not only they acknowledge their freedom but they also take the respons responsibility very honestly uh, to use this freedom and then they are very creative so, so they have uh, good uh, problem solving skills as well um before discussing further the unconditional positive regard let us see two of his quotes that can give us an idea of his approach towards learning and counseling he said the only person who is educated is the one who has learned how to learn and change so you see we are not educated at all if we do not know how to learn and how to change and then he said i believe that the testing of the student's achievement in order to see if he meets some criterion held by the teacher is directly contrary to the implications of therapy for significant learning so it means the significant learning is a learning that makes us an independent learner and it helps us to use our full potential okay uh, now we will talk about the unconditional positive regard rogers describes client centered therapy as a therapeutic relationship that could lead to insight and lasting changes in a client through non directive unconditional positive regard and empathetic understanding okay now uh, the empathetic understanding is to show an ability 
to understand and share the feelings of another person. So empathy is an important part of this uh, unconditional positive regard. And then when we say unconditional, it means that we are not doing any selective evaluation based on the certain parameters, but we are actually accepting the subjective experience of our client without any condition. And then the positive, it means the warm acceptance. We care for the clients. And then the regard. And regard means accepting, understanding the client in his, in his own context. And accepting each aspect of the client's experience as being part of that client. Hence, a client-centered or a person-centered therapy is to accept, to understand, to interpret client's experience as it is experienced by the client using client's perspective on his or her own experience it means to say i care and not like uh, i care you on these conditions so a non-judgmental behavior a warm acceptance and consideration of the client as a separate person is important to man maintain a client-centered relationship with the client uh, well, in this slide, you can see the difference between Maslow and Roger. Uh, Roger agreed with the main assumptions of Maslow, but he added something uh, like to grow the self-disclosure, acceptance, unconditional positive regard, empathy. These are uh, a few things that Rogers added. And Roger actually focused more on the strength and not the weakness and he says that people have an insight tendency to grow they just need to get into an environment to grow and then they will recover on the other hand <clears throat> maslow says that uh, one could not achieve a high level in the hierarchy uh, without first achieving those below it so you see uh, as i discussed earlier a kind of stage like progression uh, and this is for granted position uh, by Maslow. Uh, hence, Maslow thinks that people who achieve self-acquisition uh, are rare because uh, not all the people can go through this hierarchy and can fulfill their needs as the hierarchy suggests. But Roger believes other ways and he thinks that any, anyone can be self-actualized and he is not stuck in the step-by-step like step step progression of the hierarchy of needs like Maslow.